Schultz. Weeknights at 5 on MSNBC. The legislature is trying to tell us we don't have sovereignty over our own bodies. They're trying to teach us that we are thoughtless, rash creatures who don't know how to make medical decisions with careful consideration, that we don't know what is best for our own bodies. Well, I am here to teach them a lesson. We know what a world looks like where safe abortion isn't available, and we, the women of Missouri, we will not go back. Protesters were rushing the capital of Missouri today in response to a big abortion vote last night. The legislature passed a bill to require women to wait three days after seeing a doctor before they can obtain an abortion. The bill's written very broadly, which Democratic Governor Jay Nixon criticized in a statement about whether he'll sign it into law. Quote, by failing to include an exception for rape and incest, this extreme proposal would separate Missouri from all but one other state in the nation. I have profound concerns about its impact, he said, on women and especially the victims of these heinous crimes. Only two other states currently force women to wait 72 hours before obtaining an abortion, Utah and South Dakota. Joining me now is Cecile Richards, president of Planned Parenthood Action Fund. Welcome. Good to see you. What is uh, wrong with mandating a waiting period here? Well, there already is a waiting period in Missouri. In fact, Missouri has some of the, the harshest restrictions on women. And of course, at Planned Parenthood, we want all women uh, to be healthy and to be safe and to uh, make sure they have all the medical information they need. But this law will do absolutely nothing to do that. In fact, it'll harm women. Uh, and, you know, the average woman in Missouri who is trying to uh, get a safe and legal abortion already has to travel 100 miles. There's only one health center in the entire state. So this kind of law is only intended to make it more difficult difficult for women to access the care that they need. Is there a right number of days or should there be no no waiting mandated by politicians? Well, I mean what we're finding is that politicians, whether it's in Missouri or Alabama, Mississippi or my home state of Texas, they're passing more and more bills that have absolutely nothing to do with women's health and safety. They're really meant to just create sort of a gauntlet and more barriers for women to access health care. And that's why medical professionals uh, across the country oppose these kinds of re uh, re restrictions. And in the state of Missouri, why doctors lined up to testify against this kind of intrusive legislation that has, again, nothing to do with women's health and only has to do with uh, sort of putting, uh, putting more and more barriers to women to access. Yeah, I mean, it's important when you, when you put it like that, what you're talking about is that sort of the level of debate about the waiting and about comparing this to mm -hmm. products or consumer decisions or whatever isn't really what this is about. This is about a burden or what the Supreme Court used to call an undue burden when they used to actually take that that part of, of the law seriously. Let me play for you uh, what one state representative, uh, Chuck Gattensberger, said about this in one of his analogies. Take a listen. Even when I buy a new vehicle, this is my experience again. I don't go right in there and say, I want to buy that vehicle, and then you walk, you know, you leave with it. I have to look at it, get information about it, maybe drive it, you know, a lot of different things, check prices. There's a lot of things that I do putting into a decision, whether that's a car, whether that's a house, whether that's any major decision that I put in my life, even carpeting. That's, that's what this bill is, is being, having them give as much information as possible. I, I don't know that a lot of women or doctors would definitely, you know, reach for the carpeting sales analogy. Um, right. But, but what, is that, uh, what does that kind of statement tell you? Well, it's, it's one more piece of evidence of why politicians should not be interfering between doctors and their patients. It is so insulting to think that a politician is comparing the decisions that women make, very serious decisions about childbearing, about pregnancy, comparing that to buying carpet. It's an insult to the women of Missouri, and it's an insult to women, really, frankly, across the country. And, and so let me ask you, we're going to put up on the wall here, from 2013, you mm -hmm. see 70 abortion restrictions enacted in 22 states. Uh, Lindsey Graham this week demanding a vote on an abortion ban after 20, uh, 20 weeks. Um, at the state level, do you feel like you're losing? Well, it, what's really frightening is that legislators, as opposed to focusing on the issues that, that the voters are interested in, the jobs and the economy, in fact, are just continuing to introduce bills that restrict women's rights. And it's been, it, it's been incredible. I think in Missouri, this is a state where already re there are a number of restrictions. That's why we're really pushing Governor Nixon to, I, I know he's looking at this bill and he's carefully considering it. It, is, it would be an extreme setback for women in the state of Missouri. And we're 
we're really hoping that he'll veto it. Yeah, and just briefly, we, we read the statement. It sounded negative. What, what's he going to do? Well, I, I have no idea what he's going to do, but I can tell you that the women in Missouri are certainly, and women and men in Missouri are paying attention or watching. Women all across the country are paying attention. This is an extreme measure. We'll do nothing uh, for women's health, and in fact, it'll harm women. Yeah. Cecile Richards, always great to have you on The Last Good Word. Good to see you, too. Thank you. Thanks. Up next, astronomer Derek Pitts reacts to Russian officials who are saying they're going to kick the U.S. out of the International Space Station. told people they were riding Nissan's most advanced Ultima race car. We lied about the race car part. I would have never imagined a Ford.